Welcome back, everyone. Glad to have you here today. Today is going to be a disturbing but very important podcast to go over, and that is because the topic is on autoimmune disease and many diseases in general, and it's link to fast food. Now, for many of us in the natural health industry, we've known this for some time, but when conventional medicine and our media begin to publish articles and research on this particular topic, it's time to double down on it. It's time to let people know that there's a direct connection between the food that we eat and how our body performs. And by that, I mean, are we not just disease-free, but do we have the energy, the health, the ambition, the drive, the vitality for life that we are always meant to live with as humans. So a lot of times we may not be diagnosed with the disease from our doctor, right? We may not be there yet, but we have the pain, we have the stiffness, we have the weakness, we have the fatigue, we have the brain fog, we've got the aging look to us, right? Far before our time, right? We're all going to age eventually, but is it aging at a much faster rate? Now, Conventional medicine would lead you to believe that that's inevitable and that you just can't fight it and it's all genetic and this, that, or the other thing. But we know that that's not true. You just can't use that excuse anymore. And now, again, just about a week ago, and that's why this is very up-to-date information, I want to share with you what was published in the New York Post, The Guardian, Fox, CNN, like straight across the board, no matter you know what type of affiliation you have, and I have none, uh, you can see that this is very definitive, very clear. I'm going to read it to you, and then I'm going to give you my assessment, which is different, even though we're all pointing out the same thing, which is very different, though, than the clinical, I shouldn't even use the word clinical because natural health practitioners are clinical as well, but the conventional medicine viewpoint. They will never figure it out if they keep this type of viewpoint. All right, let's go over it, though, because there are some similar-based thoughts, and then I'll link it up. Um, I, again, some people don't like to read The Guardian, and some people don't like to read The New York Post. Why don't I link up both, and you can pick your favorite, all right? So let's go from that. Let's let's actually just read you the direct article, and um, let's see if we can give credit to where credit's due. Uh, it's uh, by Hannah Sparks, okay? And I think it's, uh, obviously, it should be the same no, no matter who, because it's all the same excerpts, and then I'll actually link over the research as well. Okay, so... Yeah, actually, it was... All right, so I'll give credit where credit's due. It first appeared in The Guardian, and then it got picked up by um, everybody else. So it's, let, me, let me just give you it. Global spread of autoimmune disease blamed on Western diet. More and more people around the world are suffering because their immune systems can no longer tell the difference between healthy cells and invading microorganisms. Disease defenses that once protected them are instead attacking their tissues and organs. Major international research efforts are being made to fight this trend, including an initiative at London's Francis Crick Institute where two world experts, James Lee and Carola Venuesa, have set up separate research groups to help pinpoint the precise causes of autoimmune diseases as these conditions are known. Numbers of autoimmune cases began to increase about 40 years ago in the West. However, we are now seeing some emerge in countries that have never seen disease before. In the UK alone, at least 4 million people have developed some conditions. Internationally, it's now estimated that cases of autoimmune disease are rising between 3 and 9% per year. Most scientists believe environmental factors play a key role in this rise. Human genetics hasn't altered over the past few decades, so something must be changing in the outside world in a way that is increasing our predisposition to autoimmune disease. Fast food diets lack certain important ingredients, such as fiber, and evidence suggests this alteration affects a person's microbiome, the collection of microorganisms that we have in our gut, which plays a key role in controlling various bodily functions. These changes in our microbiomes are then triggering autoimmune diseases, of which more than 100 types have been discovered. Both scientists stress that individual susceptibilities were also involved in contracting illnesses. If you don't have a certain genetic susceptibility, <clears throat> you won't get that particular autoimmune disease. There is not a lot we can do to halt the global spread of fast food franchises, so instead we are trying to understand the fundamental genetic mechanisms that underpin autoimmune diseases and make some people susceptible but others not. We want to tackle that issue at hand. 
Until very recently, we didn't have the ability to do that. They go on to talk about DNA. Um, and then they go on to talk about the different surgeries and uh, treatments that they're going to be coming up with. Okay, that was the article. Uh, I basically read 80% of it. I will link it up if you'd like to read the rest. But okay, what do we agree with? Well, we agree that poor food intake can cause autoimmune-based issues. And and again, in the natural health world, what have we been saying this for, for many, many years? I, I obviously didn't start this, but it's interesting because um, we do agree that there was an uptick in autoimmune issues about 40 years ago. So let's go back in time. What was that, 1982? Okay, 1982. Interesting. Okay, well, what happened at that time? Well, late 70s, 80s, a... a um, riptide of fast food chains move all throughout America, right? It starts with McDonald's years before that. And then, oh, that's successful. And then this, and then this, and then this. But even if you look at, you know, McDonald's back in the day, you're not looking like they weren't using the same type of meat that they're using today. It was actually, again, I'm not going to say McDonald's was good when it first opened, but it was certainly closer to human food than it is now that that like it's just it's just not created in a lab like it is now right and so here's the thing certainly there's an uptick with that uh with with fast food based restaurants but they hit on something else it's not just fast food it is it is the environment though as well we've talked about that poor before as the rain barrel effect okay you're reading the wrong foods you're being exposed to what else in those foods hydrogenated oils what else are you being exposed to in these foods pesticides. None of these fast food restaurants, for the most part, generalization, but for the most part, nine out of 10, with obviously well over that, are not using organic food. What does that mean? Well, it means that there's most likely going to be a lot of glyphosate, a lot of pesticides on that food, or at least used to create that food. Okay. So now we have environmental toxins like pesticides that we know can cause cancer. Okay. Well, what else could it do? Well, it could cause a whole lot of food sensitivities as well. And what else? Well, gut permeability based issues. Okay. Now we're starting to get to something and here's why they're talking about the gut microbiome and a lack of fiber, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Uh, I'm not disagreeing with that. Certainly I've talked about this before. If you are on a you know, a uh, certain low carb diet for too long, uh, then you're going to lack the actual uh, food for the bacteria in your gut, right? Because they feed off of things that like fructo, oligo, uh, di, mono, and polysaccharides. Now you might want to eliminate those initially for gut issues, but certainly they eventually have to be put back in to feed good gut, gut bacteria. The other issue though, so, you know, so they're not quite right on that. They're all, again, they're looking for this silver bullet of what is it within the DNA. Here's the thing. They're, and again, they're half right that not everybody is going to get an autoimmune issue. Okay. What does that mean though? It just means that, for example, me, I most likely never get Hashimoto's. Back in the day when I was sick, I didn't get Hashimoto's for an autoimmune issue. What did I get? Okay. I got rheumatoid arthritis. Interesting. Why not Hashimoto's? Wasn't in my genetic code. Wasn't in my DNA. My single, nucleotide, single nucleotide polymorphisms did not express that. But someone else's could have Hashimoto's. They could have multiple sclerosis. They could even get type 1 diabetes. They could get lupus and fibromyalgia and psoriasis and a lot of other autoimmune issues. So all that means is that we're all pretty much susceptible to something, but they're different things because we have different genetics. However, when we fill up that rain barrel and it begins to overflow now we get the diagnosed disease. But as it's beginning to fill up, make no mistake about it, you have all the symptoms that are there, you just don't get diagnosed yet because it's not bad enough to show up in your blood work, right? That's how conventional medicine works. You know, it's almost like you're, um, everything is totally fine until the day it shows up on blood work. We know that that's insane, but that's how conventional medicine works. The other issue is this, you have to understand, their numbers are so low. We already know that more than 50 million Americans have an autoimmune issue. We, we know that. So the numbers are just, for whatever reason, they're just stating them so low. I mean, the, the actual CDC and World Health Organization, again, <laughs> take those organizations with a grain of salt. Uh, but at the same time, they're, they're trying to pad their own stats, right? They're trying to help themselves. And so if they state that there's this many, uh, of course, you know, there are. So there's far, far more. But I just want to give you firsthand experience that I was doing my internships a decade ago. 
overseas. And I can tell you firsthand from working in a traditional Chinese medicine hospital in Beijing, old Beijing, that we saw the first generation of now they were, they were um, let's say, 10 years old to 20 years old, overweight, inflamed, and actually leading to a disease state. Now, how is that? Well, that's about the right time over the last 20 years that fast food has made its way into Asia and other countries. And now we are seeing the repercussions, the massive use of pesticides, the formed based animals, uh, not in a good way, right? The big cultural agri uh, agri agricultural farms and the fast food. So no longer, again, I saw so many of their parents and grandparents walking or biking to get fresh vegetables, to get fresh food. And so you have to understand when you change the environment and you change the lifestyle, it leads to dis-ease in the body because dis-ease in the body is simply an inability to maintain equilibrium. And that's why many adults get a dis-ease when they're in their 40s, 50s, and beyond. And the reason is that their body has become deficient in too many things to keep up the fight and there's too many toxicities weighing it down. Okay, it's the same reason, though, why children can also get them. Now, young, young children, there's oftentimes age-specific congenital or um, genetic susceptibility at a young, young age. But if you get it after like 10 years old, 12 years old, okay, well, what's the issue? Well, I got my issues at 17. Why? Overflowed the rain barrel at a very young age, where some people wouldn't do it uh, until, you know, 40 years old. I just overachieved in poor lifestyle and stress at a very young age. That's it, right? But also I had some help. I had a dermatologist that put me on uh, essentially three years of amoxicillin for skin issues. So lo and behold, I destroyed my gut. You can't be on antibiotics for that long and not have all sorts of health issues. Here's why. And we know this. 90% of all immune issues have to do with the gut. Why? It allows for candida overgrowth, bacterial imbalance, maybe H. pylori, maybe parasites, along with what? Intestinal permeability. That means when you eat even healthy foods, never mind fast foods, it can seep through the gut wall because your intestines have increased permeability. It lets too much out. Well, where does it go? Your bloodstream. What's in your bloodstream? Immune cells. The immune cells then increase, right? They increase because there's more foreign bodies in your blood. It is the immune cell's job to say, this isn't supposed to be here. That's not supposed to be there. This isn't supposed to be here. When I would see people with autoimmune conditions in my practice in Boston, and I looked at their blood under a microscope because I used to do live blood microscopy, I could show the person definitively sitting at my desk, look at all the white blood cells in your body. Either you have some type of viral-based issue right now. Again, we're not providing diagnosis. Or we can say, sure. Look at all the inflammation. How can you not have inflammation when you, do, when you have way more, like 10x the amount of white blood cells? Now, again, this is where conventional medicine differs. The body is not really messing up. I, I don't like when conventional medicine says, oh, your immune system messed up and it just began attacking everything else. Well, listen, you let's say you're spilling proteins, bacteria, waste, urea, everything in your bloodstream. Okay, the lymphatic system gets congested, you turn it into more body fat, basically it gets stored away in your body fat, it goes to your brain, you wonder why there's so much more Alzheimer's and dementia, right? And then what else happens? Okay, you ramp up your white blood cell production. Okay, well, what else? Well, where's the bacteria going? Where's all these proteins going? Oh, let's say that it, uh, let's say it moves towards the thyroid. Well, might your immune system, the white blood cells, begin to attack the thyroid if it detects bacteria? And they've already, dis they've already discovered this. It's called mycobacteria or microbacteria or microorganisms that are actually in those tissues. They found it for rheumatoid arthritis. They understand that's why these CD8 cells attack the joints. Well, they believe that there's bacteria inside of those tissues. So what does it do? It signals for those tissues to go through something called apoptosis, which is called cell program cell destruction. Why would it do that? Well, if it destroys the tissue, the bacteria comes out, and now the immune cells can go through a process called phagocytosis, and they can basically eat it up and remove it from your body.
Is the immune system messing up in that process? Well, it's causing massive amounts of destruction, but it's basically doing what it's supposed to do. So I think we have to be careful with saying that the immune system is messing up. Now, there is something called molecular mimicry, which I agree with. That's when you start to get, let's say, like if you have Hashimoto's and you eat gluten, right? Well, okay, those gluten molecules, protein molecules, can look similar enough to certain tissue in the body, and then the, bo- then the immune system can go after that tissue. But the immune system didn't really mess up. It's dealing with an onslaught of foreign bodies in the body, and it's trying to go after all of them. So what do we need to do? Well, we certainly don't need more surgery. We certainly don't need more drugs. We certainly de- no, don't need more biologics to shut down a part of the immune system. What we need to do is get to the underlying root cause. And since we know that 90% of all autoimmune issues begin in the gut, why don't we go there first? Why don't we run a bacteria and parasite stool test? Why don't we run a candida metabolic and vitamins test? Why don't we run an IgG food sensitivity test? Why don't we then do something like the CBO protocol with the CBO finisher to close up the gut wall? Why don't we begin to lower stress on our body and empty our rain barrel? So instead of looking for all these DNA manipulations, they're just going to have to come up with more and more because, again, it doesn't allow you just to put garbage into the body, right? If you put it in, it's going to cause inflammation somewhere else. It's going to cause high cholesterol, high blood pressure. How many people do you know with autoimmune issues that don't have uh, overweight type 2 diabetes or uh, high cholesterol or high blood pressure or high triglycerides or some type of metabolic syndrome? They're moving there. It doesn't just affect the immune system because inflammation affects anything that you are susceptible to. So yes, genetics matters, but there's a reason why people don't have to have their dis-ease 10 years from now, one year from now, because they rebalance the underlying root causes. So if you didn't have it at 10 years old, you shouldn't have it at 60 years old or 40 years old at 17 like me. So we just have to begin to look at our body genetics and our environment in a very different way. And really, integrative health practitioners can help you with this. Naturopathic doctors can help you with this. Some functional medicine doctors can, but not all, because it's, it's a lot of it's still conventional medicine-based. They only do blood work. I really, again, no one is, I, don't, I just don't want to make claims that we are treating disease or giving medical advice. You have to understand that. When you begin to understand that all these diseases, all these autoimmune issues, rheumatoid arthritis, Hashimoto's, et cetera, et cetera, are really just names for a collection of symptoms, then you can stop with all of this disease-based coding that conventional medicine has given us simply to be able to bill it to health insurance and prescribe a pharmaceutical drug. When you begin to understand that there's not a disease per se, There is symptoms, collection of symptoms, right? Of course, right? MS, nervous system, rheumatoid arthritis, joint breakdown, thyroid, thyroid break, Hashimoto's thyroid breakdown. So you have to understand it's like, it's a collection of symptoms. Okay, so now we can kind of relax on the whole disease diagnosis. Now we say, okay, these are the symptoms. What are the underlying root cause? Work on the underlying root cause. Do something like the big five. Do something like the starter kit. Do something like the bacteria and parasite stool test. And you can see all of these labs that we use in our practice at stephencabral.com forward slash labs. But also keep in mind, there's over, well, there's thousands of integrative health practitioners all around the world. You can work with them as well. And that's at integrativehealthpractitioner.org forward slash practitioners, and you're able to find them as well. What I simply wanted to do today was the understanding that we all agree that our environment is poisoning us with toxins. It will lead to disease in the body. We cannot overlook that enough. Genetics are not the end-all, be-all. We're all susceptible to something. There's always an underlying root cause. When we begin to empty our rain barrel, we begin to heal. Hopefully, this show was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning into today's show. And of course, if it was, please do feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it could serve. 